Hello and welcome back. The next topic I would like to address is called endurance. This is defined as the maximum time an aircraft can stay in the air. Again, we have to express this aim in a mathematical way. The important parameter to look at is called fuel flow. Now, if you would look at the dimensions of fuel flow, it can be expressed either in, in kilograms per second, uh, liters per second, or newtons per second. Doesn't really matter which one you use, but the most important thing to see is that it's about a quantity of fuel that is burned per second. So if we have a given amount of fuel on board, then we should minimize the fuel flow in order to have maximum endurance. So let us look at how we express fuel flow. Fuel flow is by definition equal to the power specific fuel consumption multiplied with the shaft power for a propeller aircraft. Now remember that if we have an engine, doesn't really matter what kind, which delivers power to a shaft, then it is converted by the propeller into an acceleration of the air flowing through it. So the power we have available after the propeller has been active is actually related to the shaft power through an efficiency factor. In fact, part of the power is lost because we leave kinetic energy behind us in the air. So we can also say that fuel flow can be written as Cp divided by the efficiency times the power available. Basically because what we see here is that power available is equal to this efficiency times the shaft power. So this is a nice equation, but we have power available in the equation. And since we're considering cruise flight at a constant airspeed, you can also state that power available is equal to power required, which means that this fuel flow equals to Cp divided by the efficiency multiplied with power required. Now, for most conditions for the airspeeds of interest, you can actually assume that these factors are more or less constant. So this is an assumption we make, but it's quite a reasonable assumption if you would have a look at the values for actual engines. So this means that in order to have maximum endurance, we should have minimum fuel flow. And since fuel flow is directly related to power required, we should also fly at the condition for minimum power required. Now we cannot simply ask the pilot to fly at the minimum power required condition. How should he or she know when that condition is present? We should actually calculate the corresponding optimal airspeed for maximum endurance and write that down in the flight manual such that this pilot can actually look it up during flight. Now if we go back to our performance diagram, it is quite easy to see which speed is optimal. The minimum power required condition is the minimum of the graph. So the optimal speed in case of the Spirit of St. Louis at 10.7 kN of weight, according to our simple mathematical model, is equal to 27, 26 meters per second, or in other words, 93 kilometers per hour. At the bottom of the graph, you can see this speed. 
Now note that this speed is slightly lower than the speed we required for optimal range. If we do not have this diagram, it is also possible to calculate the speed directly. Power required is by definition the aerodynamic drag multiplied with the speed. And since we need to have minimum power required for maximum endurance, the multiplication of drag with airspeed should also be minimum. Now we are considering horizontal flight at a constant speed, so lift is also equal to weight. Now this means that we can rewrite the drag as CD divided by CL times the weight, as we have done before, and we can write the airspeed as the square root of weight over S, 2 over rho, and 1 over CL. Now, just to simplify this equation a bit, we can put all the variables underneath the square root, and what we will get then is basically weight multiplied with weight squared, is weight to the power 3, divided by wing surface area, times 2 over air density, which stays the same, we get a CD squared in the equation divided by CL to the power 3. Now, if we consider a constant aircraft weight, a constant wing surface area, and we consider flight at one specific altitude, then the only variable in the equation which the pilot can actually affect are CD and CL, which are directly related to the angle of attack. So, for a given weight, surface area and air density, in order to have minimum power required, we should have the condition for minimum CD squared over CL to the power 3, or you could also write this as CL to the power 3 divided by CD squared and take the maximum. Now, we already know the relation between lift and drag, which is represented by the lift drag polar. So, that polar states that CD is equal to the zero lift drag plus a constant times CL plus another constant times CL squared. So basically a parabolic relation between CL, lift and CD drag. So in essence this equation states that CD is a function of CL. So this ratio we see here is also just a function of CL. Now if we have only one variable and we try to find the maximum or minimum, we can basically take the derivative of the function and equate it equal to zero. And if you find this difficult, you could also imagine CD as being Y and you can call CL X. Then essentially you have the equation where you want to maximize X to the power 3 divided by y squared. So this is basically a quotient and we're going to apply the quotient rule to find the derivative of this function. So let's take the derivative to the only variable in the equation, CL. So usually speaking you would take the derivative to x if you have an, a function. So now we take the derivative to CL of this ratio, CL to the power 3 divided by CD squared, and we're going to set that equal to zero in order to find the maximum. So this is essentially the, um, the quotient rule. So we, we take the denominator, CD squared, and we multiply it with the derivative of the numerator 
which is 3 times CL squared minus the numerator CL to the power 3 times the derivative of the denominator, which is 2 times CD. And since CD is a function of CL, we should also apply the product rule and multiply this with the derivative of CD to CL. Now this whole equation has to be divided by the denominator squared and that should be equal to zero. Now if you look at this equation you can actually observe that the denominator now is CD to the power 4. But as you see here, CD is CD0 plus some terms related to CL. Now lift is always positive and the zero lift drag coefficient is also always positive. So CD can never be equal to zero in normal flight unless you're at zero airspeed. So CD to the power 4 will never be equal to zero. So this means that in order to find the solution to this equation, we could say that the numerator of this equation should be equal to zero. So let's, uh, let's write that out and you'll see straight away that we can cancel out several terms. So I have that this should be equal to zero. Now I have a CD here and a CD squared over here. I have a CL squared over here and a CL to the power three. So rewriting this yields the following result. Three divided by two times CD over CL equals the derivative of CD to CL. Now, what is actually the derivative of CD to CL? You can actually observe that directly from the lift drag polar. So let's take the derivative of CD. Now, of course, the derivative of CD0, a constant, is 0, so that term is left out. The derivative of K1 times CL is equal to K1. And the derivative of K2 times CL squared will be equal to um, 2 times K2 times CL. So let's take a uh, clean sheet of paper. So we have the relation that 3 divided by 2 times CD over CL equals derivative of CD to CL and we just saw that this equals K1 plus 2 K2 times CL. Now the left hand side of the equation we can also write out so we can say well 3 over 2 times CD which is CD 0 plus K1 CL plus K2 CL squared divided by CL is equal to K1 plus 2 times K2 times 
CL. So, in other words, we can actually remove the CL we have over here and move it to the right-hand side of the equation. Um, and in that case, what we obtain is that 3 times CD0 plus K1 CL plus K2 CL squared is equal to 2 times K1 times CL plus 4 times K2 times CL squared. Now, have a close look at this equation. You will see that this whole equation basically consists of CL terms, CL squared terms, and constants. So, essentially, it's an equation, if we take the whole right-hand side and move it to the left-hand side, essentially, this is an equation which you can write as AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero, and I'm sure you are able to solve this equation. So, if we solve that, then we find that our optimum CL, so the solution to this problem, is equal to K1 plus minus the square root of K1 squared plus 12 K2 times CD0 divided by 2 times K2. So, this is a nice result because all the parameters you see in this equation, K1, K2, CD0, they are all constants. So this means that this will have a solution which is constant. Um, so we find one optimum CL, and if we look at the airspeed equation, which holds when we have lift is equal to weight, then we find airspeed is weight over S, 2 over rho, and 1 over CL. So the value we just found for the optimum CL, we can actually plug into this equation, and then for a given weight, wing surface area, and altitude at which we fly, we can find the solution for the airspeed. So we have found the solution, but I just observed that I made a small error. Of course, in this equation, we should divide the complete equation by 2 times k2. And this concludes this derivation. Now, if we apply this equation to the spirit of St. Louis, we find the same value for the optimal speed as from our graphical calculation. 26 meters per second, or 93 kilometers per hour. The corresponding fuel flow can be find, found by filling in the equation for the fuel flow. So we can actually fly one second per 0 0.0033 kilograms of fuel. Or, in other words, we use 9.5 liters of fuel per hour. Now as a final note, I'd like to address the difference between endurance and range. Now we saw that there is a difference in optimal speeds for, optim for endurance and range, which is illustrated in the animation you see now. So you see that in the top hand graph, you actually fly faster and you get to a longer distance, but the aircraft has already landed before the plane in the bottom graph lands. So you see that we fly slower in the case of endurance, but fly longer with the same amount of fuel. For range we get farther, but we don't fly as long time-wise. Now we have covered all the performance parameters in horizontal flight. Minimum airspeed, maximum airspeed, range and endurance. There is one interesting effect which can also occur when flying quite slowly, related to the stability of the aircraft. 
Next time, I will take you up into the air with a Cessna Citation Research aircraft operated by Delft University of Technology to demonstrate this final effect.